So during the first few days of vacation leading up to Christmas, I felt like I needed to add one more small personal gift for my wife. Now, she's a bit of a hippie at heart, and the peace sign has become something of a recurring theme around here. She turned a set of steel rims from old wagon wheels on our barn into lighted peace signs. We have a peace sign on our mailbox, a peace sign over her garden gate, and a peace sign in her chicken coop. So I thought I'd stick with this theme and use my CNC machine to cut a peace sign inlay into a charcuterie board. I start with a 60 degree V bit and cut out the basic pattern. Then I switch to a 1 8 inch straight bit to clear out some of the flat areas. And finally, a half inch straight bit to cut out the profile. I saw that my piece of walnut had a little extra material on the right side, so while I had the part in the machine, I decided to cut out a couple of peace sign Christmas ornaments. Since I used walnut for the board itself, I decided to create the inlay using some maple for contrast. Here I'm preparing the blank that I'll use for the inlay part. As always, I preview the toolpath on the computer, have a look and see if things make sense before cutting the part itself. Here again, I use a 60 degree V bit to cut out the pattern.
and then I switch to a straight bit to cut out the flat areas. So what you see here is the aftermath of some failure and frustration yesterday afternoon. Uh, I didn't record any of it because I thought it was all going to end up in the trash. I thought these parts were destined for the fire pit and the video files destined for the recycle pit. This V-carve section, the way it's supposed to work is that this part turns over and inserts into that part. But when I went to fit it together yesterday, uh, the parts just weren't fitting. It turns out I made a mistake in how I cut the program. I figured that out this morning when I sat down to the computer and tried to figure out what the heck went wrong. I used the wrong toolpath gadget. I'll show you that on the computer. So what I probably should have done is put it all away and come back the next day. That's the best advice I can give. When things go wrong, take a break, walk away from the shop. But it being Christmas, I was in a hurry to get this done. I wasn't prepared to just walk away, so they'd rather go with the V-carve inlay. I went with plan B and resorted to epoxy. So I mixed up some epoxy, I mixed in some white tempura paint powder, and rather than a maple inlay, I have just an epoxy inlay on this charcuterie board. Um, since I thought it was all going in the garbage, I didn't videotape any of that. Maybe I'll cover some epoxy work in a future video. Um, brought it down this morning, ran it through the planer, sanded it, and actually, I think it's salvageable. So, we'll pick it up from here. So before finishing up the project in the shop, let's uh, sit down at my computer at my VCAR Pro program that I use for CNC machining and show you what I did wrong. So here we're in my pocket tool path. I set a start depth of 0.1 and a cut depth of 0.1. This good VCAR uh, tutorials on YouTube, so I won't cover all the details of how to do a V-carve, but here's the toolpath I ran yesterday. You know, if you look at the preview, preview visible toolpaths, it looked sensible. I've done this before, that's what it looked like. It's the negative that I'm going to insert into the positive. So why didn't it fit? Well, when I came back and looked closely, I used the wrong toolpath. I, I used a pocket toolpath, and what I should have used was a V-carve toolpath. And they look very similar, so it's hard to tell that you made the mistake. And they even look very similar in, in what they produce. Actually, if we take a look at the toolpaths now, let's actually reset the preview here um, and look at the inlay toolpath for the V-bit. You see it goes around all the edges with the V-bit to cut the profile, and it looks pretty good. I can even preview that toolpath, and that like, made sense to me. However, if you compare that with the V-carve toolpath, um, the V-carve toolpath includes these little tails on the end. So if you look at the inlay the toolpath, there's nothing there. The V-carve toolpath has this little tail on the end. And what that does is, again, if I preview this toolpath, we're left with little rounded corners. And the V-carve toolpath runs a little extra piece of the bit where it cuts out that rounded corner and that's why it wouldn't fit. I didn't have those sharp corners. And honestly, if I was able to put the part back on the CNC machine and run it again, I could have fixed it. Except that I'd already cut off the screw holes and well, I'd also filled the other side with epoxy. So we'll just remember this for next time. So here you see the aftermath of yesterday, my couple of attempts to fix the inlay, uh, the mess I made with the white epoxy. I used the heat gun to help get the bubbles out of the epoxy. And then I'll round over the edges of the board using a 1 8 inch round over bit mounted in my router table. 
I'm a big fan of this Jessam rudder lift arrangement that I have mounted in the extension of my table saw. I find it really convenient. Then we do a little bit of finish sanding using a combination of my random orbit sander and some hand sanding. For the rounded edge contours, I use pieces of sandpaper wrapped around one of the spindles of my spindle sander. For the finish, I use a food safe mineral oil wiped on, followed by an application of a combination of mineral oil and beeswax. If you look closely, you'll see a little dot of white epoxy on the back side of the board. That's because there was actually a through knot that went all the way through the board right here. So when I filled this with epoxy, I just put a piece of tape on the back of the board and that void got completely filled with the white epoxy. So in spite of some failures along the way, I was pretty happy with the end result. And more importantly, so was my wife and the board now hangs on some shaker pegs in our dining room. Thanks for watching.